Now, despite the controversy surrounding operations of gold dealership fair men's gold and the fact that the investments of thousands of Ghanaians are locked up, checks by Joy Business on social media show that some firms are still promising outrageous returns, uh, which some Ghanaians are still showing interest in. So does this imply that no lesson has been learned? Well, my colleague Karen Dodu has been looking into the story. She joins me uh, in the studio. So tell me a bit more, Karen, about uh, what you set out to do with the story and what you found. So it all started when someone sent me a screenshot of um, a company the person felt was a Ponzi scheme because mm. they were promising 150% per annum. And now they have various schemes you could invest in and at every week you could get 5% of the money you invest. Now they claim to trade in diamond. So I tried calling to pose as a customer mm. so that I could get into this company and see what they actually do. But when I called their number, I realized nobody picked. So I went, I, searched, I researched more on them and then I found out they had advertised on Bing too. And then I okay, saw Okay, so one, what, what were they promising? What were they promising? So if you invest $100, that's the, that they have several packages, $100, you get 5% mm. interest every week for 50 weeks. Then if you bring in a new entrant, you get 10% commission of that entrant's investment. So that was what they were promising. That sounds... It, that's, that's a good deal. Yeah, you know, like if a it's, good deal. Yeah, that's a good deal. So I visited, I searched more on them, and then I realized that there were several comments under the, the advertisement. And what I realized was some people had tried them and realized it was a Ponzi scheme. So you could see in the comment sessions that some people were advising that please don't try them, please, I don't mention a name, please don't try them. And then you see others replying and saying, oh, I still want to know more. Mm. Let me try. Let me also get my money. So the awareness is there, but some people are still daring. So, so you actually spoke to two people. Yeah. Tell us about that. So the first person I spoke to was somebody who had tried this particular scheme. And surprisingly, he told me I should not try it because he was stuck there with his money. Okay, so we have that interview. Unfortunately, we can't name yeah. the person for obvious reasons. Uh, if we can just play that sound bite. No, right now, I'm some different system. There's no more printing. I, I don't know. So, Asun, I can't invest. Yes, it's, it's, it's quite risky to invest. Okay. The, the value of the coin, we were bidding, have dropped things. Uh -huh. You shouldn't involve yourself in this video. So what's this man saying? So he was telling me that they were trading, they told them they were trading in bitcoins. Mm -hmm. And what the he's were given now was that the value of the coins had dropped. So now they were not getting the monies they were promised. So he was telling me it was risky and that I shouldn't, I shouldn't try And there's this other person you spoke to. This other gentleman was actually on the morning show this week. And he is someone who has tried several Ponzi schemes. Now he says it's all about being smart. So he doesn't think it's bad. You just have to be smart. Can we listen to that one too? Um, I do that because, you know, when they were Ponzi, as it is going around, I invest because I know that when I invest, there are so many returns that I get. And that, that, that is what is helping me in particular. So when I invest and I get my money, that's what is important to me. With, with Ponzi scheme, when you go into it, for example, I was investing in this Ponzi scheme that just collapsed. Every day, you'll be sure that, hey, I'm, I'm going to get maybe 3% or 4% of what I've invested in this Ponzi scheme. Me, when I'm introducing you into a Ponzi scheme, I'll tell you, hey, Ponzi scheme is not, my, it's not for my father. My okay. friend introduced it to me, and I'm introducing you to it. So when it collapses, don't come to me and complain to me, Charlie. You made me invest in this Ponzi scheme, and it collapses. No, I wouldn't bear any cost of it. So he actually sounds very excited about... Uh, yeah, he, he, he feels it's an investment. He doesn't see anything wrong with it. You just have to be smart. And, and, and we know that there are also um, several people who do not even... are not aware if they are investing in Ponzi schemes. Or not. So you went out, you went to speak to a section of the public. Exactly. What did they tell you? One, one thing I'm happy about is with all that's happening, people are taking cues or slightly lessons from all this. From the numerous people I engaged, I think they've learned a lot from men's gold and they still would want to invest, but this time they'll be cautious as to where they put their monies. All right, so let's see uh, some of the people that Karen spoke to in town. Why not sit down critically and analyze? Because DKI came and could not do anything. At, at, at men's gold came and people 
a lot of people try to invest, put their money in there. It's a matter of choice, it's risk. Who have taken their risk? A lot of people put their money in men's gold were able to recoup. Others couldn't. So I believe it's, a, it's an option. So if a company should come promising, let's say, 120% per annum, what would you do? It's, it's too outrageous. Investment, dear money in I don't think I'll try any form of investment anytime soon with all that has happened. I'll stick to the banks and my small susu box, which I trust. So they say money boss, and I say media investment. So this issue that came up is really frustrating people. So I wouldn't want to go there and lose my money too. If any other company come up with such thing again, I won't do it. For now, let this issue let get down, then I'll have to start over with another thing. But for a quick investment, if, I'm, if I have anywhere to invest my money that is very sure, I'm very sure about it, then I'll have to go for that one. Then make my money, then just go. I blame the government for the low confidence in the sector now. I believe it's government's duty to fish out all the companies operating Ponzi schemes so that some of us do not fall prey to such schemes. Because of all that is happening with men's gold, I don't think I'll do something like that. So what right now would you say is the best option? I'd rather put my money at the bank. I know that at least a safe, there no dubious returns. Yes, and then I'll know that if there's any problem, Bank of Ghana will sort us out. All right, so um, what I gleaned from the interview is that more people are aware now that there are fraudulent yeah. transactions or operations going on. Yeah. But at the same time, people are becoming scared about investing. Exactly. And one key thing is they expect government to do more. They, they say that sometimes they might not be able to tell. So if government is able to fish them out, it would mm. make it easier for them. All right. Thank you, uh, Karen Dodu, for following up this story for us. So well, just in case you're wondering what a Ponzi scheme is, it's a form of fraud which lures investors and pays profits to earlier investors by using funds obtained from a more recent investor. So how can we protect ourselves from such schemes? My colleague, George Rafe, has been speaking to investment analyst Mahama Idrisu. There are still companies that are still doing them, not to the public as men's Google was doing. You have to steady it, go in at your own risk. And if you lose your money, don't call our government to come and bail you out. Mm -hmm. All what the advice I have for people is that you have to do your own due diligence before you invest in any company product. It must be licensed. You have to look at the directors, what kind of documents do they give you when you pay money. You can use all kinds of money payments, but do you know where it is going? Do you know where it is being invested? If they are giving you a deal slip, they are giving you a certificate, make sure that they are genuine. That has the license regulator on top of the deal slip or your certificate and the board of that names of the board of directors. And when you have all these things, you can trace it. But first of all, watch the return they are giving you. That's what drives people down. In terms of regulation, what should we also be doing? I mean, I, I look around and every day somebody sending something on WhatsApp, diamond, gold, and all the rest. There are still a lot of Ponzi schemes out there. What can be done to tame all these Ponzi schemes so that people don't fall victim to them? Now the, the regulators come out with a list of companies that they have, people have to watch. And if you are somebody who reads, in fact, what you need to do is that you have to always refer a company to the regulators. Insurance Commission is there, the Security and Exchange Commission, there, the Bank of Ghana is there. If they tell you that this is not a company that we have licensed, just be careful to put your money there. Meanwhile, Global Chief Executive of Max International, a worldwide network marketing firm, Joe Voitiki, is calling for a close collaboration between credible network marketing firms and financial regulators to clean up the operations of sponsors. Ponzi scheme operators in the system. Now, according to him, good communication uh, between leaders of the institutions and regulators will improve the quest to promote a safe business environment. I think the regulators are in a tough position. I, I think that people who work in government are doing the best that they can to service the community. They usually are doing those jobs because they have a love of country and they want to protect the people. Uh, so I think they're in a tough position. I, I encourage the government and the regulators to work with leaders in industry so that we can work together and work with the public to root out the bad people. You know, you're never going to get rid of them completely, right? It, it, there are always going to be people who are 
are intent on doing wrong. But it, the, the more that we openly communicate and focus on solving the problems together, the better success we're going to have. And I am 100% certain, because I've gotten the great opportunity of working with so many people in the government here, uh, that it, it, they want to improve the country. And they've done such a terrific job. I've watched the economy grow from the time we got here to now. Watch the improvements in the roads, in the street signs, in the airport. And it's happening. And people should be very proud of being in Ghana. It's a great country, and it's developing very, very fast. And we're going to work together to make it even better. All right, so the reason we are having this conversation is because of the issues with men's gold. If you have been monitoring the news recently, you would have realized that it is taking a political twist with one political party uh, blaming the other for the scandal we are witnessing today. And so for our Joy Business poll, we have been asking if government should be blamed for the men's gold saga. Let's pull up uh, the results as we see it. 52% are currently saying that, yes, government should be blamed for the men's gold saga, and 48% uh, saying, no saying no to that, and that poll is ending in about 38 minutes, so just gives you a fair idea what people think. They think that government should have done more to avoid the scandal. And some of you have been commenting. We want to pull up uh, some of your comments. Yes, uh, we've got uh, some of your comments we want to uh, share. With you, whilst we do that, remember that you have 38 minutes more uh, to participate in this poll on our Facebook page, uh, Joy Business. So let's read what uh, Teslina Loveberry is saying. It says, what is the essence of government coming in if they can't protect investors' money? They have made people's lives very miserable and they are happily enjoying with their families. Well, that's Teslina's uh, comment there. Let's pull up another one. Okay, so Richard Aka saying that government should be blamed because they never cared about the investors and went ahead to halt men's gold operations without putting structures in place for men's gold clients to retrieve their money after they created the mess, but went and slept for four months and was um, awakened by a demonstration of some uh, men's gold demonstrators. So this gives you a fair idea of what people are saying there on our Facebook page. Um, as we ask, uh, should government be blamed for the men's gold saga. Final comment, why shouldn't government be blamed for this men's gold saga? Whether present or past, government, uh, present or past, government is still government and the institutions um, have failed as big time. It seems you're wasting taxpayers' monies on some institutions, laziness to the highest level. So that was our final comment there. Uh, just to remind you, you can also participate in our poll on our Facebook page, Joy Business. That'll be it for our look at Ponzi schemes.